Hello, everybody, and Happy New Year! Popping in before the episode starts with a little bit of personal family news. Uh, This is Jenny here, and we were able to welcome our daughter, Gemma Sue to the family in late December. So uh, we'll definitely be talking more about that whole experience coming up, but just wanted to share the exciting news with you. Uh, She came in weighing six pounds, 14 ounces. I always think it's funny when people announce, you know, the the, like height and weight of their baby, but I guess it's like the only detail we have. So there's your, there's your detail. Um, It was a beautiful experience. We are just in the, you know, throes of of waking up in the middle of the night and feeding her and loving on her and getting to know her and really nourishing that relationship and um, and just really enjoying it and taking it for what it is. So thank you for so many people who have weighed in with your support and sent loving messages. We receive those and we just adore you for them. So more to come, but now here's our episode. It is No Gifts, Please, the parenting podcast by the pair with no real gifts, but a whole lot of gumption. Hey, everyone, I'm Steve Noviello. And I'm Jenny and Chanda. And I feel we're both still, the holidays are over, yes. but we're both like, we're I look like a lumberjack the, today. The holiday vibes. Well, that's a go-to look for guys, though, right? I mean, isn't that sort of a highly hey, sought-after look? I am like look? buffalo plaid. As soon as you know, as soon as the first chill comes in the air, <laughs> I think that's. But does Doug, does Doug <laughs> like that? Does he have a style that he likes you in? Like a like? Oh, I like it when you wear. No, not really. really? I mean, and he. Do you for him? Uh, you know, so with his new job, he's been dressing a lot more like suits and stuff which is super cute no um corporate dog no no tie but he's into like pocket squares okay uh and like these super cheap ties that i buy on the internet generally come with a pocket square so i've been kind of funneling all of those you know to him <laughs> your um, sloppy pocket square <laughs> seconds well because i and maybe i just don't know how to do it but i always feel like it creates this like giant like thing in like your chest po- like, right for our wedding we had these they were actually super cool they were index cards okay. with like an inch of fabric on the top and you like slipped it in to your chest pocket um so it was very 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 slim oh, okay you, know you want a more it wasn't flattering an actual hanky square. right listen <laughs> i'm at the I'm at the gym more than once a week to make sure this you know it's okay. it's all flat <laughs> okay i'm with you i need all the help i can get i'm uh, totally i totally get it um i'm so excited about our guest today i am too because i have many questions as you know <laughs> uh we are navigating our way both of us really mm-hmm. through children's sports yeah um, and like how far do you push them do you, are you supposed to even say that you push them at all i mean i don't know we've got a lot of questions so we brought in an expert this is a woman This is embarrassing to admit, but I kind of had to like stalk her online (laughs) in order to, which I think it's probably like that may be a parenting problem. Like that may be, it's another episode. It's another episode. episode. I had to stalk her online because Brighton wanted to do tumbling lessons. She had been doing gymnastics and cheer and that kind of stuff. And I saw Coach Whitney on Instagram and the way she cheered on these kids was like, I want that kind of advocate for my child. Now, she's not easy to get a hold of because she is very booked because everybody wants their child to have an advocate (laughs) like that, right? So she coaches tumbling, she coaches cheer, she does acro, she does all this kind of stuff, but she's really immersed in kind of like this Dallas community of, of cheer kids, of cheer moms, of cheer dads. And knows the ins and outs of it. She also has her own line of tumbling mats. What? Yes. So let's welcome in Coach Whitney. Hey, I didn't know that there was merch that went along with this. (laughs) What makes a good tumbling mat? Um, you know, one that lasts <laughs> more than two to three years when I was manufacturing them, I had in mind when over COVID, when I had um a bunch of online lessons and these kids were like falling off the mats or my dog stepped on it it popped so i was like you know what i could probably make a better mat i love that (laughs) and you did years but i did you did it's incredible (laughs) and you have to source all this stuff and store it i mean and you're for people you're a very young woman doing all this i I mean i didn't want to be rude by asking you how old you are but like i'm feeling rather unaccomplished i'm like around whitney's mom's age i'm like i'm ever so slightly younger than whitney's mom so yeah which means i'm ever so slightly older than your mom (laughs) but you've done a lot whitney and i think it's interesting because there's there's a lot of options there's a lot of people that do this but for some reason everybody's going to you i i have my ideas about why that is and i think it is just like the kind encouragement 
But Steve, we got on this topic because of a question that you were going over with Jacob Mm -hmm. that I thought we should pose to Whitney. Well, so here, actually, I kind of want to start at the beginning and we'll get there in a second. I want to know from you, because especially cheer, we're in Texas, Dallas in particular, it's Mm -hmm. a big deal. When you have somebody new, what are you hoping their motivation is by bringing in their kid? For the kid or for the parent? Well, see, okay, so let's oh, start there. Oh, she knows there's two different Are, motivations. Right. So I'm like, if there's two different ones, is that is that concerning? Um, no, okay. not for me, because one, I know how to fuse the two motivations together um, with the kid and the parent, but it it can be for in some coaches, yes, mm-hmm. because you have a parent who's pushing this, and then you have a kid who maybe doesn't want to be. Co- pushed and then in the middle you have the coach where they're like okay i gotta please this parent they're paying me right i'm gonna do some coaches will side with the parent so then with that when that happens i'm gonna do whatever it takes to get this kid to please their parent and in the middle there you would have probably ruined their confidence or compromised how they felt about themselves or pushed them too hard to where you know they they don't want to come back or right. injuries. Honestly, you're making them do something that they're really not ready to do. So I mean, I would imagine that the, for most kids, and let's be fair here, like the first intro to say, "Hey, would you like to do this?" is generally the parent's idea, right? I mean, Jacob sure. didn't come to me at three years old and say, "Hey, I hear the YMCA has a great soccer program. Right. I'd enjoy checking <laughs> that out." And I also didn't go to Brighton and say, "Hey, would you like to ride a dirt bike?" <laughs> Yeah. Right, like you naturally go to the things that you <laughs> right. know about. Cheer was a big part of my life, and so I thought, you know, let's tr- try it out and see if she likes it. Right, but it's it is hard to know. Yeah. Like, are they liking it? Are they? Right. What's the motivation? I mean, we don't want to be on, you know, Oprah. We, we used to say you don't want to be on the Oprah's couch. That doesn't couch doesn't even like uh, in rotation anymore. But like in twenty years, with the child saying like, I kn- I didn't really want to do this, but like my mom or dad was so invested in it. Right. And I want to please them. Okay. So that's, that kind of brings us to the question that we have. So we have, we have two boys we were chatting before, before mm-hmm. we went on the air. Uh, they're about to be, well, they're now five and about to be seven. And our seven year old, um, I, I, and listen, my husband and I also are not, we're not throwing the ball in the yard on the yeah. weekends. I mean, I don't know what, by what <laughs> uh, magic osmosis, I think these children are going to be athletic, but certainly not for me. Um, but he, you know, we signed up for soccer. Mm-hmm. Honestly, it was a way to meet other families in the neighborhood before kindergarten started because, again, my stuff, not his. Like, I, gosh, I don't want you walking in here and you're going to not know anybody. All these other kids will have played soccer for a million years and all that other kind of stuff, right? So we did it, and he, our younger son, (laughs) when he did it, he was like, he signed up. He's like, yes, 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 I want to do it. And we got so much so that my husband and I were the coaches, and we showed up for the first day, and he was like, "Mm, no. (laughs) <laughs> and we were like, okay. Um, but we suited up every weekend and he went and he sat on the sidelines and, you know, cause we were like, well, we have to be here. So now you right. have to be here. Our other son got into it, played, but there was that point when, listen, the other kids and because we didn't hold him back, they're a year older, they're more into it. They're better, quite frankly. Right. And it would break my heart cause he would say, daddy, I don't think I want to do this anymore. And I was kind of faced with like, okay, what? what do I do here? Like, is it okay to say, yes, you can quit? Or do I say, gosh, I don't want you to think that you can just not complete things that you've got, you've, you've committed yourself to. Right. And this is the son that that? liked it originally. Correct. Yeah. Okay. You know, (laughs) I mean, when a kid comes to you and says, I don't think I want to do this anymore. That's gotta be hard. What's the process? Yeah. You know, I, I, let's talk about it. Let's explore (laughs) why, you know, and, It's important to have, as a coach, to have a good relationship with that child. And most of my kids are honest. And they're like, I don't feel like I'm good enough to do it. You know what I mean? That was his thing. He's like, the other kids don't pass the ball to me. And I was like, well, I mean, in fairness, you're picking Dan Lyons. So, (laughs) I mean, I wouldn't pass it to you either. (laughs) But, you know, but yeah, I think that a lot of it is like, I'm not as good as the other kids are. So, therefore, I don't want to do this. Right. And I think that's a good time to really instill motivation in a kid. And that's when, you know... I try to re-motivate them and I'm like, okay, well, let's get better. Let's, what are some things that you want to get better at? So let's get better because just walking away and quitting, you know, unfortunately, um, you know, it's just not, it's not realistic. So if we can take a year off and get better, let's do that. And then we can come back and get them next year. And Mm -hmm. if we never give them, get, if we, if we never get better, at least enjoy the process of trying, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So um, I think that's something 
that I really try with my kids because I get that a lot. Like, I'm just not good enough for this team or I don't want to try out or I just want to quit. And that's when I'm like, let's reinstill the motivation and let's also enjoy the process of at least trying to get better or trying to come back and trying out next year. You know, because then at that point, it's like, okay, yeah, maybe I didn't get better, but I still had a heck of a lot of fun and I still want to come back. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So No, that, that it's so true. It's like it never dawns on us to say just because – you're not on a team doesn't mean you can't play soccer, for example, yeah. or just because you're not on a cheer team doesn't mean you can't work on your tumbling on the side and, and sort of not be comparing yourself. Do you yeah. see comparison come in a lot? Like what Steve was mentioning with Jacob? Um, yes, yes and no. Um, yeah. I mean, I see a lot of kids comparing themselves to other kids. I'm not as good at this person. I'm not as good at this person, but I think that's just as a coach, you just really have to steer them towards you know just focus on yourself you know what I mean be proud of yourself and you know celebrate the small wins and I think when I'm teaching these classes and stuff like that I make it a big deal for everybody to come together and be proud of this one person and I do that with each kid so it's like there's no comparison I'm happy for my friend I'm happy for this girl I didn't get it next week okay cool I'll get it the next week you know I just try to make it a really fair mm-hmm. honestly and i know sometimes that's not life so maybe that's where i need to get better at but well no i think i think that you bring yeah. up a good point because at the end of the day much like adults kids just want to feel loved and appreciated yeah. and and you know say hey great job you know and, yeah. and that's i think that that's a great thing to you know to be able to yeah. encourage your kid do you ever run into a situation where there's a kid who's just it's just not gonna it's just not gonna happen oh yeah. i mean what, what do you and, do right do you break it to the parent uh, i um, mean and i would imagine sometimes unfortunately they can be paired with a parent who's completely blind to that yeah um most of my parents honestly they're <laughs> they, can t- they tell me right off the back like you're dealing with bambi here <laughs> but i feel like with kids if you just pump them up and you make them feel like I don't know. I feel like I celebrate every little thing that kids love that and they're going to gravitate towards that. So they don't even see at that point. They don't even see or notice that they're probably not that great or, you know, they're probably on the side of, you know, they probably need OT, but they're here with me instead. But they don't they don't see that because, you know, I've instilled so much confidence in them. And regardless if we're working on a cartwheel or round up at Cantering Double, they still feel good. And that's what's most important. And so, you know, with these with these parents and with these kids, I mean, they keep coming back for that alone. Kids just want to feel good about themselves. And, you know, with that, with that, I just, I keep, I see them every week, mm-hmm. you know. Um, they still, they're so confident that they're still trying out for these cheer teams and they're still trying out, you know, to do the, whether they make level one or the, whether they make level five. I mean, they feel so good about themselves that it doesn't matter to them, you know. Yeah, that's, that's so. a great point. Have you had to nav? I've seen you have navigate this a little bit where you mm-hmm. talk with the parent and say, look, like as much as, you know, look, you want business, right? Privates are your yeah. business. People come to you for lessons. Do you ever have to stop and say, hey, we like he or she needs to take a break yeah. and step away from this? How do you navigate that? Um, you know, I'm I'm honest. I'm like, hey, I think we need to take some time off. Let her have a little mental break and then make her want to come back. Because sometimes, you know, I run into a situation where the parent's like, no, she needs this, she needs this, she needs this. And, you know, sometimes the kid doesn't necessarily want want it. You know what I mean? And I, you know, as a coach, you know, I still, you know, I, I do my job. But at the same time, you know, it's it's hard. But I well, but you also don't want to be, I would imagine that, you know, I, I and again, I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I would imagine it's a far greater thing, not only for personally, but for business to be the coach that kids love as opposed to the coach that makes kids do stuff they hate doing. Right. You know, I mean, that's yeah. got to, when we had um, swim lessons at our house for our younger son, who the first week loved it. And this right. kid was very, very nice. And he would come to our house to teach them swim. And then the second week, he's, he was like, no, no, no. And that went on for weeks until, I mean, the swim coach would come over and just like, our son would just shoot him with a water gun. for, And we were like, okay, <laughs> we cannot subject this you to this yeah. any longer. We're happy to pay you for your time. But we also feel yeah. like th- this is not what you signed up for. You're right. not a target here for our son to, you know, to shoot a, a, right. a water gun at you. And we had to say, hey, you know what? I think that why don't we revisit this at another time? Yeah. Hopefully at a time when you're going to come back and be like, daddy, I... I want to take those swim le- because our son, the younger one, um, was like, "Why? Well, I, I had a swim lesson. I'm good." And we're like, "No, buddy." <laughs> like, <laughs> swim lessons. S plural. Yes. Less, less I think that that's exactly how I um, approach the situation. I'm like, you know, let's take a break and let's wait until the kid asks to come back. 
And I think it's just simple that once the kid wants to come back, she'll come back and when she works hard. But, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to motivate a kid who's not self-motivated. So, you know, you just have to wait until they're, they're wanting to do it. Because if they don't want to do it, then it's, it's hard for me, even though I can reinstill, like I said before, reinstill that motivation. But it mm-hmm. is hard. You know, how do you go about kind of introducing a kid to an experience without, cause that, so for us, again, I'll use my own experience. We signed up for flag football with one of our boys mm-hmm. and it, from the first practice, it was clear that this was not going to be a match. Um, now, luckily the payment had not happened yet. So I had told them <laughs> when we went to practice, I was like, Stop hey, the auto draft. We're, right. We're here to see if you like it. And if you like it, we can yeah. stay. But if you don't like it, no, like no, no big deal. Like I, right. it doesn't matter to me. Um, and he definitely did not like it. And I was like, okay, great. Like, and I, you know, I called him, I said, thank you so much for your time, but like, we're not, we're, we're good. Um, is there a way to kind of, I mean, how, because I think that parents, there's such that pressure of like, we paid for cheer lessons. We paid for yeah. tumbling. Like, how do you expose you kids? Joined a team. Right, right. Or we joined a team. Yeah. I mean, is there a way to expose kids to that? I mean, do you, do you, what's the suggestion? For the parents? For, or for the kids. I mean, do you go to a tumbling gym? Is it for free time or, or oh, open, like open play? Oh, like to see if they like it. How do you know if your kid likes something yeah, without would, signing them up for it? I mm-hmm. would, um, you know, a lot of these gyms, they don't do free trials anymore. Right, so you're exactly. going to be paying for something, <laughs> whether it's a lesson or whether it's open gym. There's camps that are right. offered. I know our gym, we have a bunch of them. Um, every Saturday, we have a camp, you know, for them to do every but day. But that they could go classes. as a one-off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They can go as a one-off. Every Saturday, you can drop in and do a, a tumbling clinic to see if your kid likes tumbling. Oh, mom, I want to go back to that thing right. I did. Okay, cool. Let's call. And then, oh, they have classes every week. Do you want to go every week? Okay, cool. She starts coming in for classes every week. She gets a cartwheel. She's like, oh my God, this is so much fun. I want to learn more stuff. Oh, okay, let's do private lessons. You know, then I'll probably see the kid or one of the coaches at the gym will see the kid. She's doing really good. That's when I come in and I'm like, she's actually really good. Let's try out for a cheer team. And right. you know what I mean? And I think that's just, you just kind of go. Now you kind of, I call it a rabbit hole. It's really not a rabbit hole. But you go down this rabbit hole of like, <laughs> You I'm know, you end up. Hole. Yeah, you're now your daughter's a cheerleader. Now you're you have the big faces. You're holding them up at competitions. You know, so I think there's like steps that you can do, kind of just like what you said about your son for football. You know, you kind of took him to a practice. Do you like right. it? And then you can go from well, there. Well, but I think that you know, as 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 totally logical and pragmatic as mm-hmm. that is to you, I think that a lot of parents kind of skip the first three or four steps in what you described and they're like, hi, we're here to be on the traveling cheer team. No, it's yeah. true. I think yeah. it's so true. It probably seems very obvious, right. to her, but we're just like, I don't know, like, is this the NFL? Like, right. like is Jacob in the NFL now? I, I don't know. He's not. Um, it, it, Whitney, I'm, I'm curious to know if you had kids, mm-hmm. um, which I hope you do someday. Um, <laughs> if you had kids, when would you start them in something like what you teach? Oh, that's a good question. Um, you know, I, I don't think there's any fault with starting them young. So probably like two only because, you know, it helps with motor skills. Sure. I can take them to a local mommy and me class. We yeah. can do it together. Not only are we bonding, but I, I right off the bat, I can see, OK, she's strong enough. You know what I mean? She has great motor skills. She probably will be a good tumbler one day. And if she doesn't want to do that, that's fine. But right off the bat, um, I can see you know, just her overall athletic ability at yeah, around two or three. And honestly, the the class that I teach, it's every Friday morning. I think it starts at like 18 months or something. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. I didn't know you did a Friday. What? Yes, a mommy, mommy and me? And me. <gasps> so I will be seeing oh, you very guess soon. What? Yes. Guess it's what? It's so fun. <laughs> it's so fun. That's probably one of my favorite classes because I, I, you see them grow so much in a year. Yeah. They go from like wobbling into the class and now they're doing Ford rolls by themselves in like a matter of like six months. <gasps> and the parents are like, oh my God, you're definitely going to see on a team next year. I'm like, in three years, Jenny, but that's okay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> or Stacey, whoever it is. I know. No, it was definitely <laughs> Jenny. Like, with, like Brighton was four when she tried out. Yeah. Like Brighton was legit so four late. years old when, <laughs> yeah. she, when she tried out for a team, which I yeah. feel like, I think they may and have we actually- started even before then. Yeah, I know? think they might've even increased the age. I don't know if you can try out <laughs> when you're four anymore. I don't know if we got in through a loophole <laughs> or what. But, um, but it is kind of crazy to see. And sometimes I question it. I'm like, is this too young? Because you don't want them to burn out. So mm-hmm. I want you to talk to you because you see older athletes. You see athletes mm-hmm. that have been doing this from, you know, age four, five, six or yeah. 18 months up until- you know, they're in high school. Do you yeah. see burnout? Do you think there's there's any risk in being in, in a particular sport several days a week for, yeah. you know, 15 years? 
I definitely see it sometimes. I mean, some of them are like, you know what, I don't want to do it in college. I'm like, fine, that's okay. Like, I, I try to encourage them. I'm like, you're really talented. You could. But at the end of the day, it's like life is so much bigger than <laughs> your sport. Sure. You, they can explore other things. And sometimes it's good to just respect that and be like, okay, yeah. Or even, even at younger ages, I see it in fourth grade. Like, oh, I want to take a break. That's fine. Respect that. Let them enjoy being eight. Let them enjoy being 12. And then let's come back to it when they want to. I would always keep them in private lessons or a class or something on the side to keep up with your skills mm-hmm. for sure. But um, if they don't want to commit to something, I, you know, I, I do see it a lot. And I think it's just, I'm like, that's fine. We don't have to. All right. Mm-hmm. If people that. want to commit to learning more about you, where do they find you? First of all, go ahead. Uh, how about a shout out to the gym? <laughs> do you, is it just one gym that you're at? Yes, okay, Mustang. So cheer. Must- oh, yes. I know. I've heard of Mustang. It's cheer. in your neighborhood. Even, yes, I was going to say. <laughs> I see a lot of Mustang cheer kids where we live. Uh, yes. And where can folks find you on social media? Tumble with Whitney, um, Instagram, Facebook. I have a website, a little about me, tumblewithwhitney.com. Awesome. And the mats are there too. Yeah. Yes, the merch, get, the mat merch. People want to yes. get the mats. They're really incredible. I mean, I've seen people that have had them now for a while and they're yeah. still like holding up strong. It's true. <laughs> the other, like the Amazon mats, like he's on me. He's like, we have to inflate this thing every day. I'm like, I know we're going to eventually get the Whitney mat. <laughs> well, I, we appreciate you being here. And I, I do have to say, you know, one of the things that we um, now ask the boys, in fact, I just did this recently with Jacob. I, you know, we were talking about, um, you know, sports and stuff. They asked me if I wanted to sign up for winter sports. And he said, I think it's going to be too cold. And I was like, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I said, great. No. And I said to him, what do you, what do you love doing? And, and I, well, I don't think that that's it. Well, what do you think he said? Uh, math. <laughs> <I'm just kidding>. <laughs> <Le> <laughs> although, although yes. Uh, and he's like, I really love arts and crafts, daddy. And I was like, awesome. Yeah. Let's do more of that. Yeah. Right. Like, as opposed to like, okay, like, listen, and granted, he's only, you know, about to be seven, but essentially for the first few years, it was like, here's what I think you might like, by the way, regardless of whether or not it's something I even like, um, because I think that that's just what you do. So, but like, I think it's important to ask your kid if you could do anything, what would you do? No, I, like I agree. in the moment. And I think what's hard, and I don't know if you relate to this at all, but typically people in our profession that end up in our profession are completely obsessive. Like you don't get, it, you don't do this <laughs> and let, you have to be completely just like mainlining it to this yes. profession in order to have it happen. So when you are, have a family member or a child who um, is presenting as like a little bit more normal, <laughs> Um, it can be confusing. Like, what do you mean you don't want to be at the cheer gym, gym eight days a week? What do you mean you don't want to do like basketball and football and softball? I mean, right. growing up, like my mom was driving me across state lines for dance class across <laughs> to another state multiple days a week. And and I saw nothing of it. I was like, and I also, I want to do, you know, competitive soccer. I want to do track. I want to do cheer. And I, so, so then when you're presented with a child who is more chill and probably much more likable in life, totally. Um, he's I so think chill. It's, like, I think it can be confusing. And so I'm always trying to like pull back and think, okay, don't do to her what you did to you. <laughs> you know, it's confusing. Well, now you've got two to do it too. So <laughs> well, she, well, she, the second one could be the obsessive one. Pr- and occasionally Brighton has like the obsessive the tendency tendencies too, which yeah. I'm like, Oh, I relate to that. But then I'm like, Oh, that's a hard life. <laughs> it's a hard way to live. <laughs> oh gosh. Well, Hey, listen, uh, we want to thank you for making things not hard, but so easy for us by continuing to tune in and listen each and every single week. Remember we are everywhere that podcasts are available. And if you do nothing else today, go find yourself a friend. You don't need to clean the house for. We'll see you next time.